They've been lying to us. All those Ozempic users, they have been lying to us. Here they've been showing off these hot bodies, these decrepit eyeballs, or it wouldn't be the eyeballs, right? It'd be the, it'd be the sacks under, the bags, the Gucci eye bags. They've been showing off these sexy bodies, the Gucci eye bags, but they've been lying this whole time. Folks, if you don't know, uh, Ozempic has been causing people to shit their brains out. These people have like serial diarrhea. And I mean that in the sense that what's coming out of their ass are cocoa pebbles. It is serial diarrhea. These people have hemorrhoids. And they've been keeping that close cards. They've been, they've been not wanting us to know that. That besides looking hot, they actually suffer from something. And having a hemorrhoid for some of these people is a scary thing because we know, I know we're not supposed to body shame, but we can body observe. And we know that some people on Ozempic, they don't have ass. So having a hemorrhoid is a scary thing when you have no ass. Because the, the likelihood for friction in genes, because genes are very in right now, denim is the thing. You know, getting obscure denim from Japan, that's the cool thing to do. I mean, you're, you're, you're playing, um, you're playing a dangerous game. You don't know when that thing's going to go. Guys, I'm on tour. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm in Brea, California. Uh, If you're seeing this episode, I'm in Brea, California tonight and tomorrow. And, uh, following that. I will be in Florida. Um, I actually, I actually need to look up where in Florida because I'm forgetting. I think it's Tampa. No, it's. If you just go to NoelleMillerLive.com and and you live in the Tampa area, I think there should be tickets to come see me. But if you're in Brea or near Brea, come through. Um, I'm running the new hour. It's going to be a good time. I've been I've been touring pretty hard this year, just quietly. I got some lovely, lovely commentary from people on the last episode. Uh, some of you love this, and I, I appreciate you uh, tuning into the broadcast. Uh, others of you had some weird things to say, like, "Dude, that parking lot is would be so sick to blow someone for drugs in." And I was like, "I I don't know what you mean by that, but, but hey." Uh, I'm sure someone back here, I'm sure someone back here could make the exchange. Um, I just, you know, the connection out here is kind of crazy. So I'm just pulling up my, my dates, but yeah, I'll be in Brea. And that's a, that's a weird thing to say because no one, no one besides people who are trapped there goes, yeah, I'm gonna be in Brea. Like no one says that willingly or intentionally, uh, outside of work and, and suffering. So yeah, I will be at the Tampa funny bone. Uh, July 19, July 20. So if you live, if you live in the Tampa area, uh, come out to that show. But yeah, I, I, I know that some of you may know about the diarrhea rhetoric, diarrhetic, man, there's so many layers you can add there, right? Uh, with Ozempic, I just learned about it. It's kind of, it's kind of wild to me because I feel like fitness people say things like, oh, you can't, you can't just, you know, you can't spot, lose weight. You know, you can't just shit weight out. And it seems like you can't, you know, um, if you look at the Ozempic side effects, which also Ozempic is very relevant to me because as I've been touring the past few months, I've been watching a lot of hotel room TV a lot of hotel room TV. Hotel room TV is fascinating, bro. The, the ads that they run on standard television in hotels, they don't try to hide it. They are trying to scam people, old people all the time. That's all it is, is trying to get old people to buy stuff. And when, when I say they don't hide it, if there are like laws about how language is used in advertising, they don't abide by any of it. You'll be watching a show, let's say it's a rerun of some anime, it'll be Cartoon Network, and then it'll go to commercial, the commercial will be a man screaming through the television, 
Vacation now! Vacation now! Deals so hot, we can't put them on the TV. Vacation now! Call Like, if I'm old and I have nothing to stop me or to tell me, like, hey, don't do this right now, I would think, oh, fuck, I got a, I got a vacation now. But, but part of these ads also is standard television ads. It's all pharmaceutical stuff. And I know I've spoken about this before, but I think for anyone who's listening for the first time, it's worth knowing. Um, by the way, uh, if you've been enjoying the show, go ahead and leave it a review on on whatever platform you get this through. Uh, and if you've been wanting to just listen to the show, uh, I don't know, because you're a truck driver or something, you can do that. Um, so yeah, leave it a review if, if you're enjoying it, um, but only if you're enjoying it. I don't want you lying either, okay? I only want 100% authentic, I'm enjoying this reviews. And I actually don't want you to say anything else besides I'm enjoying this. So anyway. Yeah, all uh, all hotel room TV ads, they're, it's all pharma, which makes me feel like it's only targeted at old people because that's who's left watching most standard television. And again, I've spoken about how comfortable these companies are uh, just kind of dropping in like, you know, side effects may include suicidal thoughts. They, ju- they just throw that in so calmly. Um, and it makes me think a lot about how I personally, when I see these commercials and the may include suicidal thoughts, I always think, man, what was the year or the point in time where when they put that in a pharma, it was like the first time. It was the first time they're going, hey, we kind of got to let people know if they take this for eczema, they will want to jump out of a building. You know, who is the first one to kind of kick the door open to be like, for big pharma to be like, we don't, we don't care anymore. We don't care if people take this stuff and want to blow their brains out. We, we need to get this to the itchy people. What was that year? Because now it's every pharma commercial. Every single one is like, you know, take this for, you know, diarrhea. You may kill yourself. And and I'm not saying anything new. But I think what I'm just kind of impressed by is like literally every commercial is like, you might kill yourself. You might kill yourself. You might kill yourself. I think I sit around in, in hotels. I've, I've spent enough time watching hotel room TV and seeing enough pharma ads like I, I think I may one day just jump out of a building because just the pharma voices just keeps going, you might kill yourself. It's like, man, I, you know what? I might. And then I may, maybe I just do it. JK, we're just, we're just joking. Okay. But anyway, Ozempic, I think I've paid more special attention to it because of their new commercial. Oh, 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 Ozempic body parts. That's the, that's the new jingle. You couldn't believe it, right? But they had a big thing with O'Reilly. O'Reilly's like, hey, that's our thing. Uh, And O'Reilly actually tried to sue Ozempic because they're like, hey, they're kind of in our world of of body work. Auto body work. And uh, Ozempic defended being like, there's no autoimmune deficiency that comes with this. This is just straight body work, pal. Fuck off. You know, then they have the other one. Um, oh, what is that other Ozempic jingle? Uh, yeah, my needle going psycho. All this extra weight on me. I don't know how they got the Post Malone rights for that. That that was insane. But that that one's crazy too. Um, they also did the other one with uh, it's like Ozempic gang shit, slaughtered gang shit. And they got 21 Savage at the end of the commercial being like, I like keeping my body in line. Oh, and then there's the, uh, the, uh, the other one. Uh, I don't know. There's just a very popular Ozempic jingle and it's just, I've heard so many now it's, it's hard to recall the one that really has plagued my mind, which feels like a bit of an oxymoron, but you know, when something's so good, it becomes second nature that you forget about it. It's kind of like, hey, do the Pledge of Allegiance. And you're like, uh, 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 but then you tap in. It's kind of like that. 
Nah, just kidding, guys. You know the one. Oh, 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 Zampic. What's nice about that jingle is those O's, those are actually the sounds you make as the needle is going into your stomach. Oh, oh, oh. Then you jam it in. Um, obviously, there's all these new side effects coming out about it, but um, these people are duking their brains out. Which kind of makes me think, why not just go to the old school methods? Cigarettes, cocaine, cigarettes, more cocaine. You know, just start. Because, you know, the the eye thing, at least if you're, um, at least if you're a, a serial, maybe alcoholic, you substitute meals with alcohol. Actually, no, alcohol, that, that kind of puts on weight. That doesn't really help you. But... I think that's the, maybe that's the the exchange God has arranged for us. If you want to keep the pounds off, you got to give up some sleep. I wonder how you sleep on Ozempic. You probably sleep pretty good because you don't have anything in your body. You're just shitting it all out. You ever take a big duke and you wrap it, you wrap and you go, God damn, man, I need to take a nap. Is that normal? Be my doctor. Is that normal? I have no clue. I'll take, I'll take, you know, I'll drop a load off. I'll back the truck up. I'll drop a load off. And sometimes I finish up and I go, dude, I need to lie down for 15 minutes. I don't know if that's normal with taking a dump. So be my doctor. Let me know. And I'm going to, I'm going to read all the comments and take them seriously. Every single one, I'm going to read it and believe it. So if you're the first one to comment my prognosis, just know that it's going to get overwritten. So maybe you want to hold it back. You want to give me my prognosis like four or five comments after because that's the last one I read is the one I'm going to take the most seriously. But yeah, um, check this out. You know, on the I know. <laughs> oh, man. I know I'm really running away with this one, but this article is uh, tragically funny. Woman suffers life-threatening bowel injury, will have diarrhea forever after using Ozempic. Now, this is the New York Post, so this could be completely made up, which is fine, because what is reality anyway? It's just something we kind of make up for ourselves, isn't it? (laughs) Sorry, the connection out here is, uh, is is kind of ass if we're keeping it on theme. (laughs) Uh, I'm laughing because there's a guy falling down some stairs in a wheelchair. Woman suffers life-threatening bowel injury will have diarrhea forever after using the Ozempic. uh, After using Ozempic. Sorry, I just did an LA thing. The Ozempic. We kind of talk about it like a freeway here. Because it, you know. Yeah, I'm on the Ozempic. This is a very California thing, the, prefixing with the, the or that. Um, an Ozempic user will suffer from diarrhea for the rest of her life after sustaining a serious bowel injury, allegedly brought on by <laughs> injections of the wildly popular uh, weight loss drug. Some of you may be hearing this being like, dude, I get the runs pretty regularly. I think this is for me. Uh, which, you know, some of you may have, built up, um, you know, uh, like some, some, some sort of like, um, you know, when a baseball mitt just gets like used over and over and broken in for some of you, that might be your relationship with diarrhea. You know, you could just, just take a fastball easily. If that makes sense. Anyways, all plaintiffs claimed the jabs caused gastroparesis, a rare condition that affects the spontaneous movement of the stomach muscles. See, that's wild. Giving yourself IBS. (laughs) Gastroparesis leaves patients with nausea, bloating, and severe abdominal pain. I said plain. Per the Mayo Clinic. And it can also cause vomiting weight loss and malnutrition well causing weight loss is kind of the goal so i don't know why that's included 
you know, even the vomiting to a degree, because I've heard that now, you know, I was, I was just put onto that. The vomiting associated with Ozempic, it's just, it's just coming out both ends, isn't it? Jesus. According to the suit, the woman was diagnosed with a life-threatening bowel injury after using Ozempic, prompting surgeons to subsequently perform an eight-hour op- operation in the hopes of repairing her cologne. Her colon. Just trying to be a broadcast safe. While she managed to survive the scary medical episode, she was said to have been told by doctors that she'll be in pain, quote, for the rest of her life and, quote, will never have a solid bowel movement again. Okay, I don't know about you. See, this this is an enlightening moment because here I am accusing these people of hemorrhoids, but they probably don't. You know, they probably, they probably got... Um, they probably got a weathered, you know, uh, mudslide, but maybe hemorrhoid isn't it because if you never took a solid duke again, kind of nice. It's kind of ideal. It just depends on on what level of never solid we're talking about because it, it, the gap from messy to just pure liquid um, is it, there's, there's a spectrum in there. So uh, it's unclear whether she was using the drug for weight loss or the treatment of diabetes. Well, I think we know. If you're not instantly replying, this is for diabetes, we know what it's for. Um, and that's to be an influencer. I can't wait for that, man. <laughs> Use my code at ozempic.com. <laughs> Must be a weird thing when you're on Ozempic and people come over and you got to explain like, no, 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 I'm not doing heroin the old school way. You know? (laughs) No, I think Ozempic comes in its own branded tubes. I'd be pretty upset if Ozempic came in just a clear syringe. I, you know, I want something that looks good. I want to feel like I'm getting what I paid for. Um, Yeah, anyway, I was just... You know, I I took a fascination to this because all the people getting skinny, I was thinking, man, there's obviously there's obviously a price that you pay, but I didn't think it was cereal dookie. But anyway, hey everyone, I need to interrupt and take a quick break to thank a sponsor today. And that is Shopify. How many things can you name that are always growing? I bet your grandpa can name one. But maybe you would think your relationships, your skills, your customer base. uh, But how about your business? And how about your business on Shopify? (laughs) Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage to the first real life store stage all the way to do we just hit a million orders stage? That's a stage. Shopify is there to help you grow whatever you're selling. Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system, wherever or whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to other leading commerce platforms. And you can sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic. Their AI tool is designed to help you succeed online. Candidly, I've used Shopify a ton in my life. I've used it to start plenty merch, uh, plenty of merch stores, excuse me. Um, I've had friends start many different brands using Shopify. So uh, it's always been a go-to when selling something online for me and my own individual career and my friends. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resources are there to support you because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash company lot, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash company lot, all lowercase now to grow your business, no matter what you're selling or what stage you're in. 
Hey everyone, I got to interrupt for another break to thank another sponsor, which is SeatGeek. Summer is officially here and it's the perfect time to start attending more live events like me live in Brea, California or in Tampa, Florida. But you know, there's other live events that are outside. Those are the good ones. Uh, almost as good as sitting in a comedy club. Um, seeing your favorite artist is something you may want to do this summer. That's why I need to tell you about my special hookup from today's sponsor, SeatGeek. Everyone can use my code LOT10 and get 10% off any tickets on SeatGeek, whether you're a new customer or not. Sports, concerts, festivals, you name it, there are so many artists touring right now. Noah Kahn, Zach Bryan, or even me. Uh, whoever it is, SeatGeek has you covered. Each ticket is rated on a scale of 1 to 10. So look for the green dots because green means good, red means bad. Every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee. And SeatGeek is the only site that lets you return your ticket ahead of the events with something called swaps. No matter how many times you've bought tickets before using SeatGeek, Lot 10 is still going to get you 10% off your order. So take out your phone, open the SeatGeek app, and put the code LOT10 into your account. What are you waiting for? Do it now because this offer is only available for a limited time. Before we depart from this moment, I would I've been thinking maybe this motivates the creation of a new treatment because prep H you want to talk about pharmaceutical prep H has dominated this, you know, the, uh, how, how, how would you say this? The butt pimple industry for a long time. No, that it's like, anyway, prep H has been around for a minute. Has there been no company that has invented like, you know how salt just kills a snail? Wouldn't that be awesome for a hemorrhoid? You could just take a bath salt and just... And you just watch it... Kind of deflate. <laughs> That'd be sweet. Just get your heels in the air. Hold on, pal. <laughs> you know, I was... Uh, God, I, I don't know. This is not really worth holding on to, but... Ah, I, we, we've gone so long on this subject and it's disgusting, honestly. I can't believe I've talked about it for this long. I really am a yapper, aren't I? Um, I, I was doing this bit for a while the, at the top of the year for like a good few months and it was like a selfish thing where I kind of enjoyed making people uncomfortable because it's just so crass and it's not really intelligent. Uh... But there was this relatability when I call it out. It, there'd always be one or three guys in their 50s. Or it'd be like one dude in their 20s, a woman in her late 20s, and then um, you know, a couple dudes in their 50s would always relate to this. When I would kind of joke about having a hemorrhoid, and uh, the way I described it was like pushing the UFC logo out of your ass. And that was always fun for me and the people with the hemorrhoids, but everyone else would everyone else would judge us. They'd be like <sighs> So I I'd kind of wish it on them, honestly. Cause I didn't like that. Anyway. <laughs> I've been depressed as hell like the past two weeks, three weeks, and I think it's from all the travel and Oh God, I I can't <laughs> I can't get away from this, but I, you know, I'm gonna go for it. So, some months back, Alina and I watched this um, this documentary about your stomach biome. They refer to you as your biome, and how your stomach can affect your mood. And I was thinking, man, I've been eating like shit. Maybe that's contributing to the way I feel. Um, and so I took nature's. Uh, I guess maybe nature Xanax, just oatmeal. You know, I've been eating a lot of fiber, just a lot of oatmeal to try to purge my biome of the of the bad thoughts. But part of this documentary was this girl doing a self-conducted um, fecal transplant where she's taking her boyfriend's poop and putting it in shells or, or on like um, plastic capsules and then consuming it to fix her biome. And I was thinking, man, if these if these Ozempic guy if these Ozempic users could just kind of maybe get a clay or something to keep, you know, the 
they could package that stuff up, man, because the Ozempic is in it. It's worth more. Disgusting. <laughs> oh, my God. Um. Yeah, I, I really didn't think I was, you know, going to get on today and uh, go on about poop this long. I planned it for a little bit, but not this long. And, uh, yeah. I, I Maybe I'm doing this so you guys are like, maybe go back to the robot stuff. <laughs> I do have to say, I've, I've been kind of reflecting on all the weird experiences I've had on the road this year. I had a weird one last week in North Carolina where um, a guy asked me to apologize to his wife because they walked out of my show and they just so happened to be at the bar I was at afterward. And uh, this guy was like, we walked out of your show. I had mixed feelings about it. You know, some of the stuff you said was offensive. If you could just apologize to my wife, he was wasted. Um, And out of curiosity, I go, what? Like, okay, you clearly want to talk about it. Like, what were your mixed feelings? And then him and his wife kind of proceeded to lecture me and they were like, you don't joke about race in the South. And I said, I don't think it's such a black and white thing. They didn't like that. That kind of pissed them off. And so um, the guy literally shook my hand and said, I hope to never see you again. And this was after he got in like a big argument with my tour manager. Um, and honestly, from an outside perspective, hilarious. Um, but, you know, his wife, she referred to me as a good guy. She's like, I don't like, love your comedy, but you're a good guy. Uh, and then they went into the parking lot and she shot her husband. <laughs> no, just kidding. They, they did go out on the patio and have a big argument with each other. And then they left. So I think I was maybe in the middle of something greater between them. So good luck to them. Uh, I also had a, I was in San Jose and we were trying to play some pool, me and my, my tour crew. And there was a drunk woman there. Despite her level of inebriation, she was winning games um, by just never putting a ball in the pocket, but also hitting the ball kind of, off because she's like kind of hammered and then the other players could not uh get a good shot in and then she just eventually win um i played one-on-one with this woman for 45 minutes my tour crew everyone watched me for 45 minutes and i eventually won uh i took down the titan i didn't think it was possible honestly because i was about to lose too just uh, from sheer attrition and i went home like i went to my hotel room as the Ozempic ad is playing. And I was thinking, bro, did I really just spend an hour to win a pool game? Did, like what? I need uh, some like, I need some self-respect, you know? So that 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 was kind of odd. But you know, I've, I've also had plenty of great experiences on the road uh, this year. Like I said, I've been touring kind of hard quietly because uh I've been talking about it too much. Just it's just been happening. Um wrote this hour like real fast. Had had to write it super quickly because kind of announced tour dates on a whim and I it was like a weird thing where I, I didn't know if I was gonna take a break or not. And yeah, you know, I I love performing, so I'm like, I don't really want to take a break, but yeah. I I'm reflecting on all this because now it's kind of quieting down. I've I've got some time off. And I was was just thinking to myself, like, why the fuck did I go to Tulsa, Oklahoma in January? That's like, that, that is, um, even people in Tulsa were like, I'm not, I'm not going outside, bro. Why are you here? There's nothing that can convince me to even leave my house right now. Why the fuck are you here doing stand up? So, but they're, you know, Tulsa was great. Great shows there. Shout out to everyone in Tulsa. Um, honestly, I do want to say, Thank you to everyone who's come out to see me this year and the last like three years. I've I've had some uh, very because uh, you know when you sell tickets to shit, you don't know who's there, and I've had some pretty 
uh, pr- pretty dope just one-on-one conversations with people where I was in Phoenix and some people flagged me down after a show and they were like, this is my fifth time seeing you. And so if you're one of those people, uh, I just want to say thanks because that, that is awesome that you keep coming back. Um, and big shout out to everyone. You know, I've gotten some really nice messages after shows just being like, yo, uh, love the direction this has gone. Um, so yeah, I'm not dying or anything. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to kill myself because the, of the Ozempic ads. It's just been on my mind, uh, all the support that uh, people have been giving me by coming out to the shows. So thank you. Um, my brain also hurts because it feels I've just been touring nonstop for like three years. And so to finally have a pocket of time where I'm not really going to be performing uh, feels feels weird and nice, um, but probably won't last long. I'm definitely going to probably get back out there. Uh, definitely doing more stuff around LA too. Anyway, um, let's get into the fun stuff. You, you know, you want to talk about the skin of the anus. I mean, you don't, but (laughs) there was this, um, there's a video that dropped like two weeks ago, I think. And okay. So some, some researchers, basically they put together, uh, some researchers put together a, like, I don't know how you describe it, but it's not one to one. It's definitely not one to one, but it's a it's an advancement in creating human skin for a robot. That's where they're at. It's been done before. They they meaning um the nerds have wrapped a robot finger in human skin, but it was just kind of frozen. It was almost like having a lucky rabbit's foot. Remember, remember when you got those at a bowling alley arcade? Some of you may not remember this, but arcades and bowling alleys, some of them used to have uh, like rewards for tickets. And that was one that was wildly popular. (laughs) It's actually kind of hilarious when I think back about the amount of times I've been in a black light based arcade and I've won a, a, a crude amount of tickets because I was never a ticket oriented um, uh, arcade player as a kid. I don't think most kids were. I never, I never related to the kids that were like, I want to get a lot of tickets. And I go, you want to do fucking homework right now? That's kind of how I looked at it. But the amount of times I'd, I'd be in a black lit arcade at, at a bowling alley at a Las Vegas casino, a motel, a hotel. Uh, how many arcades has had a bin of neon rabbit's feet? It was absurd. It'd be a bucket of fake rabbit feet. And that'd be one of the cheapest things you could buy with the tickets. So just, you know, picturing the amount of American children who are like, I'm gonna get three rabbit feet. And then there's probably, you know, the kids that started chewing on them and licking them and the parents were like, whoa, there's my quirky boy. Anyway, um, <laughs> these researchers, they, they're they figuring out human human skin. And this is sort of an, inv- an advancement in this category. And I like this because there's so many just fun things to consider here. There's going to be a skin manufacturer and it's not Kim Kardashian. (laughs) No, there's going to be a straight up skin manufacturer. Um, and it's, it's clearly already about to happen. And, and things always start academic, right? AI started academic and then it became, uh, privatized. So when the skin industry becomes privatized, which who knows, These researchers are designing this for robots, and I'll get into that in a second, but technology is always repurposed. And when you look at what they've put together, it made me think maybe people will actually be sort of revolted by human real robots. I think people, the only way they'll accept it is when it's, um, it needs to be so real that the, uh, 
the fourth wall isn't broken. But I, no one wants like a 70% real human. You know, something that like the skin is good, but the face is crazy. It's just like. Also, there's like a weird, there's a weird category. There are, there's a weird problem uh, that all the, like the fast food chains are going to have. Um, when they're like having to pick the race of the robots that take the orders. That's going to be like a weird, you know, how do you, how do you choose? Because, you know, if you're in the Midwest, if it's a white girl making your food in the Midwest, you want her to have a shitload of tattoos. You want her hair kind of greasy. She has to look like she skipped one day of showering. A lot of tattoos, either a tongue ring or... Uh, she's got to be bolted the fuck up. If there's no tongue ring, it's got to be like nose ring, seven down this ear, uh, septum maybe. Just for me to trust that my food is being made right. Um, if you're in LA, if it's not a Latino working a, a McDonald's after midnight, I might drive off. I might drive the fuck off. I just, I don't know how much faith I'll have in, in who's behind the fryer assuming we're at robots, right? Um, actually, that's going to be a funny flip in politics. When people start reversing their racial positions, when they're like, nah, you know what? I want a minority making my sushi. I don't like, I don't like the, the Meccano hands on my sushi. I want a thoroughbred, authentic Mexican immigrant working under an Asian chef making my sushi the American way. So anyway, these researchers, they create this, uh, this skin. And what's interesting about it is it's human skin. Let me read this exactly. Okay, this is pretty wild to me. It's made of a cultured mix. And by that, they mean they took all races into one mix. It's kind of like the Powerpuff Girls, sugar, spice, everything nice. But think about that, but racially. Uh, it's made of a cultured mix of human skin cells grown in a collagen scaffold and placed on a 3D printed resin base. So they, they kind of like merge it, right? It's like you have the cultured mix, the ethnic mix, and then you have the 3D resin base and you put them together and what you get uh, I can show it to you. It it looks like a condom, but I think it's it look it's like a condom with eyes, or it also kind of looks what you would imagine maybe like a pancreas. I think it's also what some people envision as an embryo. Like that's the start of of life. It's just a flat skin cupcake with beautiful eyes. Just. It also sort of looks like they uh, they degloved Thomas the Tank Engine. It's got so many. It just it fucks with your mind when you look at it. But um, what's interesting about this is the detail that they kind of have this this layer at uh, this layer of fake skin, and more importantly, within the skin itself, they have these little valleys these V-shaped valleys in the skin that they're able to fill in so that the skin can stretch and fixate to a surface, which is more like what we have. You know, our skin kind of flexes and, and moves. Uh, so right now it looks like a condom or maybe a, maybe like a, like a party city, you know, um, spooky flesh wound. It's it's somewhere in there. And I know I kind of have to explain condoms to people because, I mean, who's even? Is anyone practicing that anymore? Isn't everybody just going raw? Because, you know, everybody's semen is full of microplastic anyway. It's not like it comes out liquid anymore. It comes out... How I imagine modern... Uh, modern uh, <laughs> whizzy squirts are it's just like the side of a candle 
you know, when a can like a candle melts and you get that little, it's like that. Um, and inevitably that's what they're going to use to make the the skin. But nah. Um, so yeah, they 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 take this plastic mold and it can flex and it it's starting to produce like a smile, which is just this is the beginning of really weird ethical choices. I don't think they're going to print this skin. This is my big prediction. I don't think they're going to print this skin in human colors. I think they're going to get into a weird territory where they, you know, no one wants to be the first to do it. And so they're going to do crazy shit, all blue, all green, all red. Um, but even more horrifying is they took the, this resin that they're able to make this face that can like flex and smile. Cause I, I, I didn't explain that. They, they printed this on this condom and it's like a condom sized face and they're, they have like micro movements attached to it. So the things can smile. It's producing, uh, the baseline of expressions. And then they, they took the mixture and they weren't able to produce a human face, but they got close and it really, on first glance, you're looking at it going, oh shit, that kind of looks like a person. Um, and it, it just trips me out. Like if they, if they can iron this out in like a couple football seasons, like think about that two Super Bowls from now, they're like, oh yeah, they're, they're man, they're, they're 3D printing um, white people. But they'll they'll be white as a mannequin. It's not like white in the you know Euro context. It's like no, they're literally a hundred percent like hex color FFF white. It looks like Baymax. Everyone's gonna look like a Pixar character. <laughs> Everyone meaning these robots. Um. They 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 try to do this thing in the article where they're like, oh, it can also work for the cosmetic industry because they they're able to produce a smile for 24 hours, so a cosmetic company could study wrinkles and this and that. They don't give a fuck about that. They don't. I did start thinking again. What if people don't want human like robots? Like, what if in producing the skin? They roll out these robots and people are like, nah, I don't, I don't like it looking like me. I want it to look like something else. So then they just make all these robots look kind of weird and, you know, non-human. So rather than it feeling friendly, they want it to feel like a product still or a machine. So there's that separation. So then this technology be goes to a weird place where if they develop the ability to match human skin tone and stuff, I just started thinking, man, what if what if people just start degloving their face after 30 and they're like <laughs> fucking Imagine walking into the to the skin shop, to the skin cosmetics um surgery place and you are 65 years old, like you look like a nutsack head to toe and you go, "It's the day." And they just deglove your shit and they rewire you and you come out that bitch looking 22. Your heart is 60, but you look 22. <laughs> Looking young as hell, like, hey. <laughs> and they're like, yo, what the fuck is up with this fool's voice? This fool got popcorn lung or what? No, I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually 60. I'm. I'm 69. Yo, this fool is cap, bro. This dude is capping right now. Oh, God, you're cap, dude. You are not 69. I'm 69. Look at my ID. And they pull out the ID, and it's his, you know, it's, it's the degloved version because he already got his fucking uh, electronic state ID updated. It's like, no shot, fool. No shot. This fool is literally 69. And he's like having to go through his iPhone and prove that that would be some crazy shit. You look 21 and they don't believe your ID. They think it's counterfeit. And then you got to show your D. You're like, 
Imagine state IDs start needing a a little a little tick box there, degloved. The amount of times you've been degloved. It's like oh. <laughs> We're going to start coming up with terms because that'll be another thing. You know, old people that they're fucked up when they drive, assuming that old people are still allowed to drive when this process is possible. Imagine someone driving like a 60 year old, you know, doing 30 in an 85 in an electric car that's got auto. But you're like, man, what the fuck? And then you drive by and you're about to flip this dude off. And it is a it's a 22 year old in there. With a fucking French, you know, a French crop up top, drop fade, old as fuck. Young as shit, though. (laughs) That's why I think when you're growing old, you shouldn't try to fight it. Because you need people to know that you're old. You can't, you don't want to be 60 and having people like, but looking 22 and people walking up to you like, <laughs> yo, yo, hold up. Yo, my man's got those. <laughs> yo, my man, six Solomons, dub for real. You're like, huh? Oh. You need to be delineated in society, at least by age, because, um, and and I've been accused of being ageist, and I would say I am in the sense of age just kind of provides organization. Like <laughs> just in terms of, you know, mentally I think I just need people to be old so I know the the proper amount of road rage to have. The older you are, the more rage, basically. Nah. Nah, nah, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I do feel bad when old people have to drive and they're just, they're just sweating bullets trying to get 20 blocks from their house because they have to go pick up their prescription and their kids hate them. And they got to get on the road and everyone around them are just in LA are in just big ass trucks, fast cars, just being like, man, go fucking die. Get out of the road. Leave this place. Leave this earth. Be gone. (laughs) Just sitting there. Dentures and nutsack skin. Just. That's not even how you are at 50, but whatever. Shout out to my old people. They use YouTube now. They're here. They've been here, actually. 50 isn't old, man. 50 is is um, weathered. It's weathered, but uh, old is like 70. That's old. <laughs> Shout out to my dad. You're old, brother. Um. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so they're figuring out skin for robots. Thought that was fun. Because we get so focused on the tech side of it, we don't really talk about how they make, how and when they make them look like us. Because that's the final step. You can have a, you can have a perfectly nimble, um, like the Boston Dynamics robot. It's perfectly nimble. It can dance. You can put a gun on it. But everyone still has this kind of, well, but it's still a robot. When they look like us, that's when it's scary. I do think it's funny that, because inevitably, they're going to use robots to replace human workers in in certain aspects. And it's taken like 2,000 years of human development and technology to replace the work ethic of immigrants. That's what it takes takes Harvard and MIT to design uh, an immigrant equivalent work ethic. That's the only thing, like like a Latino working construction, literally the only thing after that is an automated machine. That's the only commitment after that in terms of strength, focus, per- perseverance, commitment to the craft. 
But outside of that, I mean, the, you're just not beating it, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, l- less of a technology-focused chat today. You know, something else I, I was thinking about was because there are people in this country that they get in cars and they go, I don't give a fuck if this has an airbag. Old guy, you know, old guys that work on classics, they go, I don't give a, I don't care about an airbag. Lock in and go. I've noticed when people get a lot of money, they go and buy a car that doesn't have an airbag. And I think they feel a sense of conf, like they feel a sense of bravery in that. It's like, man, I'm going to drive this $200,000 Porsche <laughs> that doesn't have an airbag. Because I can do that. Because I can rebuild my face if something bad happens. I don't know. I've noticed personally in my advancement in career, I find myself eating more things that hurt to eat. Because I, th- I think what happens is as you gain a certain amount of success, you know, pe- people become more afraid of dying because they want to hold on to their wealth and they want to experience it forever. And then they start saying shit like, oh, you shouldn't eat this. You got to eat that. And you should stay away from this. And, you know, and they're all about prolonging their life and living a long life. And what I find uh, that I end up eating is fresh, you know, um, Amish made bread, Amish made sourdough, and when you bite into it, it fucking hurts. It's not that machine made soft corner bread that you get from Trader Joe's or Ralph's. It's like hard ass real bread. And uh, the vegetables and stuff, they become harder to eat because they have like real nutrients in them and like the flavor and the texture is real. You got, you know, because real food should probably have dirt in it. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I, I find that. I found that in my career. When I, when I go back to things I used to eat, you know, for example, think about how easy it is to eat an Oscar Mayer hot dog. They tell you there's meat in that shit. It's probably, it's probably Play-Doh, but it tastes good as hell and it goes down easy. You ever eaten a real beef, like, quote, authentic hot dog? It's disgusting. You feel bad eating it because you're like, this is not, this is not right. There should be plastic in this. There should be pieces of cockroaches. There should be, you know, machinery oil in here. This tastes like real beef. This, this hurts. Even when I go to Europe and I've traveled to Europe and I've eaten grass-fed, home, like, you can taste it. Grass-fed food, homegrown food, stuff with nutrients in it. You're, you have more frequent shits because there's real fiber in it. Your stomach gets all weird because it's like, oh, there's like normal stuff. I got to process in here. I'm not used to having that. It just hurts more to eat. But when you eat a Burger King, you're like, yeah, I could eat a lot of this. This is just pure sugar, no nutrients. Get it in, get it out. Let's go back. So. Yeah, no real, no real point with that. Just, just something I was thinking about. <laughs> I was also with my in-laws this weekend, and I think it's a funny thing that I have all these really. I don't know. I don't know how you describe them. They're just thoughts. Maybe they're stupid, and I'm not trying to be smart. I'm really not. Just things I think. I sometimes categorize these thoughts as just like slightly terrible, terrible because they're stupid, terrible because like why are you thinking about it? And I like how when I get around my in-laws, I do this dance where I pretend like I don't think this stuff. And I try to talk to them as though like I'm normal like them. And I'm, I know, I know they don't think stuff like this. (laughs) I, I found that sometimes I think I prefer to be alone because then I know, then I, then I know I don't have to pretend I'm the you know, the let's package up the Ozempic diarrhea and sell it in pills person. I don't have to pretend I'm not that. I just get to be that person. 
while I pick my underwear and shuffle through magic cards and queue up in Counter Strike. <laughs> Oh. Anyway. So yeah, I'm on yeah, I'm on tour. I'll be in Brea. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's gonna do it for this episode of uh of the broadcast. So uh thanks for joining me folks. Um I hope to see you again very soon.